So at this point, it's no longer a hot take. Not even, no, not even close. Not even close. And I know that there's been a lot more people than myself that has been not only screaming to the top of their lungs saying the same thing. Early civil civilizations, ancestors, all of them, they were way smarter than we like to give them credit. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. But the more we keep checking these videos out, the more we learn, the more we see, they were way more advanced, way advanced. Now I'll take it a step further to say, some of these things I'm seeing and learning about, they were, you could, you could venture to say they were a lot smarter than we are. It's just from the information we're gathering and seeing and hearing, you could make that argument. But today we're here for, they had a two billion year old nuclear reactor. If that doesn't scream advanced, <laughs> I don't know what does. <laughs> so we gonna check this video out, man, but it's, it's, it's still mind blowing. Sorry, it is. And I get excited about it. So let's check this out. One of the largest theory community groups in the world is that of the combined writings of cryptozoological beliefs, or even that of the overly popular concept of alien intervention and abduction. It appears to be the collective theory and gathered evidence of the existence of ancient advanced civilizations. True. It's only really been in recent years that people have started to look into our ancient history, study what our ancestors said, Fact. and look at how they realistically created and achieved what they did. Various archaeological discoveries have been made in recent years that have confused scientists and researchers. Although they've gone on to explain how these things came to be, it's important to remember that these are just theories, and although they may be the leading idea into how these things came to be, it doesn't mean- And that's another thing I always make fun of, you know, our home builders compared to their architects back then. It, it, it's not even close. One good gust of wind in some of our places are gone, but their things have stood the test of time. So, you know what I mean? Ah. And although they may be the leading idea into how these things came to be, it doesn't mean we should totally rule out other possibilities. True. Back in 1972, when a large amount of uranium ore was being mined from the Oklo mine, Located out of the country of Gabron, a small nation found in Central Africa, scientists began to test the uranium deposits to catalogue the amount of recovered uranium-235 that was gathered from the site, and could be used for ongoing efforts of nuclear fusion and nuclear reactors. Unfortunately, they quickly realised that a substantial amount of uranium-235 was missing from the ore deposits, as uranium-235 naturally forms a solid concentration of 0.72%, but found a significant amount lacking from the mined minerals. As they investigated the situation, believing that perhaps more than 200 kilograms had been stolen, Jeez. they quickly realised that located near the mined location was the perfect conditions to form a believed to be naturally forming nuclear reactor that is dated to be roughly 1.8 billion years old. The scientists claimed that the uranium ore was used up when a naturally formed cavern Using underground water to help stabilize the nuclear reaction was discovered underground. Theorists, however, have an alternative explanation. Given the fact that the specifications required to form a naturally made nuclear reactor require specific storage of the uranium-235, the continued influx of water and a number of steps to prevent the compounds from becoming superheated, it's believed that the location is not naturally formed and rather the use of a primitive nuclear reactor used by humans, and possibly used to create a substantial amount of energy. Theorists point to the fact that if ancient humans were allegedly able to build- So the question, my question is, what were they planning to do with that energy? With said energy that they were gonna create? You know what I'm saying? But even 
removing that million dollar question out of the equation, bro, they were smart enough to know, okay, we need water for this. We need to separate this. We need to keep it this. We need to keep it cool. We need to do this. We can't let it over. Like, mind-blowing advancement. That's all I'm saying. Theories point to the fact that if ancient humans were allegedly able to build massive megalithic structures, along with impressive inventions which seemed impossible to achieve during such a time, why wouldn't they be able to build something like a nuclear reactor? The issue with these theories, including those that scientists have put forward, is that they're just theories. Mm -hmm. It's understandable why people would think that advanced civilizations once lived in the past. After all, their incredible megalithic structures are still standing today, thousands of years after they were built. While modern buildings and designs have fallen within a few hundred years. <laughs> Less than that, bro. <laughs> Less than that, man. I don't know where y'all live at, but I've seen way less than that. There's been some places been thrown up that can't make it a decade or two. Scientists, historians, and archaeologists can't agree on the age of some of these structures either. With some saying that they're a few thousand years old, while others have said they're tens of thousands of years old. Today, the claim that this is a nuclear reactor is debated. Other mysterious structures are those that are currently standing at Giza. It's a subject that's been talked about for years, but what some don't point out is some of the inconsistencies and math that comes with it. The first question that's being put forward is if the three to 80 ton blocks were dragged up the pyramids. Why are there no marks on the structures itself? Also, where are these massive ramps that helped with the workers? How are these ramps able to take the strain of a 40 to 60 ton stone block? According to modern historians and Egyptologists, they claim that a massive amount of people helped construct these giant pyramids. In fact, Greek philosopher and historian Herodotus claimed that 100,000 men built these structures, and they did this within 20 years. Now, I was listening to a, a video the other day, right? And it, it's just this guy's theory on how the pyramids were built. And he said a lot of people always think it was from the outside in. He said, what if it was from the inside? Building it up from the inside. He said a lot of people always think it, it happened and they had this ramp and they just went around the outsides and built it up. But... Maybe we need to start thinking it was done from the inside up. I was like, that's a good, that's another way to think, another way to look at it. That was another possibility and it, it really made me start thinking. So I wanted to throw that out to y'all, see had y'all heard that before. That would mean that one stone block would have to be precisely placed on a pyramid every three and a half minutes, 24 hours a day for 20 years straight. The pyramids are claimed to be royal tombs. It has of today not one mummy has ever been discovered inside. One thing that is known about the Egyptians is they carve hieroglyphics into many things. Yet when inside the pyramids you will not find any hieroglyphic markings. As mentioned, although various theories have been put forward to try and explain them, as of today they're just theories. The main questions that remain today is how were they built? Why were they built and who built them? Also during the 1950s, French Egyptologist Ari Schwaller visited the Great Sphinx and remarks that there was a substantial amount of water erosion across the structure, believing that perhaps the structure had been submerged at one point in time and had not been weathered by the wind as previous theories claimed. Shortly after this claim, Schwaller was labelled as a mystic and slandered by countless other archaeologists who believed that Schwaller was making up their claims to appeal to a fringe group of theories. Despite these personal attacks, alternative Egyptologist and author John Anthony West sought out the opinion of the Associate Professor of Natural Sciences at the College of General Studies at Boston University, a geologist by the name of Robert N. Schmack. This was back in 1989. Robert then spent a significant amount of time investigating the enclosure's geology, 
and came to the conclusion that the main type of weathering that was evidenced on the Sphinx's enclosure were caused by significant amounts of water damage, and not that of natural wind and sand as previously theorised. Robert Schnock also found the weathering was consistent with blocks found at the Valley Temples, leading Robert to claim the following statement. Therefore, the granite facing is covering deeply weathered limestone. The original limestone structures must predate by a considerable degree the granite facing. Obviously, if the limestone cores, originating from the Sphinx ditch of the temples predate the granite ashlars, and the granite ashlars are attributed to Carfrey of the 4th dynasty, then the Great Sphinx was built prior to the reign of Carfrey. End quote. Given the fact that the Egyptian government is keen to maintain the history that the ancient Egyptian civilization was responsible for the megalithic structures, and not some unknown civilization that predates their culture, it would explain why efforts have been made to cover up the findings over the decades. Today, the water erosion hypothesis is still shunned by the Egyptian community. So what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Like, for me, I just I just like to give credit where credit is due. You know what I mean? I don't have a problem giving anybody their flowers, you know, and, and saying that they, they were advanced and maybe smarter than I am or maybe smarter than we like to give them credit for. You know what I'm saying? I have no ego when it comes to that type of stuff, bro. They're our ancestors. And we can still learn. That's what I, I think a lot of people have an issue or a problem with, man, is feeling like we we we're too good to learn from our past. No, bro, that's that's part of life. You know what I'm saying? And no, it's not it's not gonna downplay any of the things that you've created or invented or anything. It's not taking anything away from you at all. They were advanced, bro. And we're seeing it. And if we don't remove the ego, then we're not going to be able to move forward. You know what I'm saying? And be better. And eventually get to that point. You know what I mean? But we got to give credit to where credit is due, man. And I like to do that, bro. A one, uh, two mil billion year old nuclear reactor, fam. Like, everything that has to go on with the nuclear reactor, bro. Come on, man. That ain't that ain't just <laughs> a fly-by-night thing that you just discover and say, oh, man, they did that. No, bro. No. They told you the steps and different things that have to be done. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, man, I, that was my pc way of saying things because if we wasn't on this platform and i could really go that's why i have to stop myself and pick and choose my words sometimes you know what i mean because my hand gets spanked when i get to going in so that's why i kind of have to pause and catch myself and say different things you know what i mean because if i really go in the way i want to go in i'd be in trouble but anyway y'all get at me let me know what you thought of this video and stay around and stay tuned so the next one i'm gone peace